What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Ask Philip, a.k.a. The DM Zone, where you slide into my DMs with all your questions about money, life, whatever that you think that I can answer. And let's get to the first question. Best way to bolster your savings. Now, on a very rudimentary, elementary level, you got to look at things this way. Just think about other areas of your life. What gets tracked gets done. Therefore, what doesn't get tracked does not get done, right? I mean, simplistically speaking, but it's a reality. If you're not tracking where your money's going, you are losing it. The end. If you just stop and look, for a lot of you out there, if you just stop and look and see how much money you spend on Uber, you're probably surprised or scared by the actual number, right? So number one, start with a budget. Figure out, figure out what your expenses are, where they're allocated, and how you allocate them in terms of how you spend your money, right? If you see, oh my God, this is too much here, I might have to watch this part. Just see where that's going, because again, there's two ways in life and in business to generate profits. One is increase income. Two is to reduce expenses. So if you figure out how to track your expenses and you save them, you will have made a profit. Those are your savings right there. Savings are profit. You get what I'm saying? So make sure you, number one, have a budget. This is a basic one. There's tons of them out there. If you have, if you need need help, just hit me up. I'll send you one. But they're out there. You just Google personal finance budgeting sheet free. Something will come up. You put your you put your stuff in there, see where your money's going. And then from there, you can start to see, wow, I have this money left over. Let me see how I can start investing it. And there's a number of ways you can do it. You can put it into diversified stock portfolios like ETFs that track the S&P 500. Your money will just compound and grow automatically. And you can keep doing that. And if you do that, actually, for 10 years, depending on your amount, you will become a millionaire it is not a function of probability it's a statement of reality physics gravity you ever seen an avalanche a snowball turns into an avalanche money operates the same way but it all begins with you tracking where your money's going because once you know where it's going then you can predict what your money situation will look like in the future and how much you can put aside to to build for your financial future or financial freedom in the future just keep in mind i'll leave you with this this one guy never made more than fourteen thousand dollars a year he worked with ups for god knows how many years he took 20 percent of his entire paycheck and he would invest it into company stock by the time he retired he had 70 million dollars because the company had taken off just think about that noodle on that for a second next question do i think crypto will replace the via currency and the money system as we know it no i don't i simply don't simply because whenever you see a change coming you start to see it in its early infant stages very few things just come out of left field and even if they do they take time to settle and then mature into what they can become right so what we've seen with crypto when they first came in is like oh my god this is going to replace money really really there's still an entity it's opaque and let's call it a banking system that controls money and in addition to that, they control the people who then spend the money. So until and unless the people decide to no longer trust the money system for its daily activities, whether it's buying milk, whether it's paying your bills, until crypto starts to show that 10%, I'm just throwing out numbers, 10% of people's daily money activities have been replaced by crypto. You cannot say that it's trending in the direction of replacing that. Could it 100 years from now or into the future, maybe even 50 years from now? Who knows? But we're, with the information that we have right now, it doesn't appear that way. What you have seen in terms of how currency and the daily transactional activities have evolved is that instead of giving cash to somebody, it's become tech enabled you had paypal which then became streamlined to manifest into something like square or cash app or venmo where you can create that instantaneous that instantaneous transfer of capital which you know when you have to send a wire it takes days and you have to pay for it that's an immediate friction point as immediate pain point that can be disrupted and innovated and it has in terms of money being transacted there's not an intrinsic pain point there and what would the new situation be right but what i do see is that it is evolving in the direction of a crypto asset as an equivalent of gold you know gold has value but you don't use it to transact i see bitcoin going in the same direction being a digital equivalent of gold hopefully with a little less volatility but no i don't see it in the foreseeable future things could change but in the foreseeable future no i do not see that
Yeah, all right. This is one of those questions. Come on. Uh, chip shortage, we need a little more context and perspective with these questions as it relates to what? You now forced me to Google what it was that it means. So let's see. Let's read from this article from Yahoo Finance that says what the ship, ship shortage means for the U.S. economy. I am reading now. The global computer ship short, chip shortage could have larger ramifications than making it harder to buy the latest video game console or more expensive to buy a car. According to a new Goldman Sachs note, the slowdown in chip availability could in theory smack U.S. GDP by as much as 1% in 2021. Some computer chips have no available substitute, and if output of every product that uses chips were to decline proportionately, the drag on 2021 GDP would be around 1%. The short answer is this has nothing whatsoever to do with personal finance, and this is one of those macro questions that are simply too grand for my simple mind to even fathom. Next question. Now, it's one of those questions that I get typically surrounded by this notion that everything that I say only works in the United States of America. I get people saying, oh, a lot of stuff you say is US based. Let me tell you this. If I were to teach breathing techniques, does that mean that it only works with American air? No, it doesn't. These principles and tips are universally applicable. Now, the same process that it would take for you to become a real estate developer in, in, in uh, Denmark and Germany and America. It's the same in Canada. Now, obviously, there are different little legalities and nuances in terms of how commerce and, and how transactions are done that may differ slightly, but overall, it's the same thing. You must find a place to develop some, to develop the real estate. Find a site. We call it a development site, a piece of land. Then you figure out what you want to build. Then you figure out who can build it. You need a builder. Then you got to have the money to actually build it. Then you either sell it or rent it out. It's a very simple supply chain from that, from that standpoint. That same supply chain is what you see with, let's say, apparel, clothes. You have, uh, you have the cotton. Then you have the factory. Then, then you, have the, you sell it to the wholesaler and then the retailer. And then it gets all the way down to the end user. Now, in terms of what you would, you would have to do, if you're trying to figure out how to actually do it, I would recommend that you go work with a developer. Just hit up a bunch of people. Make sure you're serious and say, look, I see that you're doing this. Uh, can I work with you? I can help you with ABC, XYZ. I'm not going to ask for a single cent. Just This is what I did. I said, teach me what you know, and whatever it is I can do for you, you just do it, and I'll do it for free. That's one way you can get involved. Or you can just start with, an, with a real estate brokerage. I don't really recommend that because you learn how to to facilitate transactions versus being the one who who's either buying or selling. You see what I'm saying? It's a different type of skill set. It will give you exposure to the industry, but it teaches you something else than what it is that you really see. So I would say find somebody that you know that's doing it, that's not too big, but that's maybe three, four years in, you can get to speak with them and boom, off to the races. But in short, you find a development site. It'll say it costs, I don't know, I'm using Philadelphia as an example. I don't know what the price is on Canada. That's the differentiation, right? So whatever that number is, find a piece of land get an architect some of the some of the some of the land comes with with um with plans already we call that shovel ready so you don't have to actually get an architect you can just get the land get a gc that stands for general contractor have the financing lined up of course if you buy the land some lenders will just give you the money to to build a property just get a hold of the land first that actually happened with me i had the land i started building and then we secure financing for the rest i don't have to come out of pocket I didn't have to come out of pocket at all to, to, to finish it. So that's what you can do. Then once you're done, you either sell it or you lease it out. Then once you lease it out, you have to also do the property management side of things, rent collection, so on and so forth. Then in short, if you want to get started, either work with somebody that's doing it or figure out how you can get to the place where you have a piece of land and then do it. Very simple. Universal principles. So go for it. Well, that's all for me. Thank you guys for watching Bold Business. If you want to get more answers and you have anything that's on your mind, just hit me up. DM me at Bold TV or at YFWTV. And if it's a good question, we'll include it on the show. Until next time, I'm out of here. Peace out.